What's going on guys, your boy Ryan here, I am back again with another video, as always, what's going on, excuse me for the uh, late upload and the lack of the poll, I was very, very, very busy, it's this late upload, but it's all good, what's going on, um, shout out to all the new subscribers, big shout out to everybody who came by the stream last night, having fun with us, uh, we're just discussing a few things, you know, outside of gaming, we're discussing gaming as well, but we're just chilling, uh, so shout out to everybody who came by, gotta give a shout out to the uh, podcast members from last night, uh, we had ACO7 on board, we had DNA Glitch Gaming on board, we had King Thrash, we had Royal Flush, we had Jax, and we had Big Money, and we had Nico. So shout out to everybody who came by again. Um, if you guys missed it, it's on the channel. Go ahead and check it out. We're just chilling with you guys, discussing a few things. Good time, man. Good time. Very, very, very good time. Uh, all of you, all of my, uh, pretty much my haters, pretty much, you know, I, I know it's a lot of you, you know, just are so bitter because you guys get blocked all the time. This is what I'm going to do, and this is, uh, you can thank uh, Big Money for this, because Big Money made a very, very good point to me last night when we got off the uh, air. Uh, a lot of people think the podcast instantly ends when we get off the air, but it actually doesn't. It actually continues to go, for, for the most part. We just, you know, we just lay back and chill. So, the podcast continues to go, for the most part, and, uh, you know, I was talking to Big Money about a few things, so... Anyway, what I'm basically going to announce is uh, all my haters, all my hardcore haters, you know. One thing I know is about my hardcore haters, they are like my biggest fans. Everywhere they go, they just, you know, they advertise. So what I'm going to do for you guys is this, man. I'm unblocking everybody. I am not blocking anybody anymore. Now, let's say if you do happen to get blocked. It won't be by me. It will be by a moderator. So if I was you, i watch what you say in terms of racism and everything of that nature because I have moderators. That's the only thing I'm going to tell you right now. That's all I got to say. You know what I'm saying? So I'm saying, that's all I got to say to you guys for that matter. Other than that, you know, welcome, welcome back to the channel. And let's go ahead and get, you know, let's get into gaming. Obviously, let's get into a few things. So that being said, let's move on. Um, so this article isn't really like, again, like this is, this doesn't go with my point or anything, but it does, it does uh, kind of raise a few eyebrows. It says four years and three Xbox Ones, <laughs> and it is kind of true. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk about a few things, okay? So, obviously, the Xbox One X is uh, getting ready to launch in a few days. Um, a lot of people are excited. A lot of people are, you know, 50-50. You got people like CNET unboxing it. You got Digital Foundry unboxing it. A few other places unboxing it. So, you know, the hardcore fanboys are saying the day has come. And I'm sitting here laughing like, yeah, sure it has. But, <clears throat> um, you know, let me just go ahead and get a few things out the way from my end. Uh, I'm not buying the console, obviously. Not that, because I can't afford or anything. No, I'm not buying the console simply because the console doesn't offer me, a person like me, anything. It doesn't offer me anything. The console, for one, is not, you know, pro like, it's not delivering what it was originally promised, which is 4K60. Not delivering anything of that nature. And the console in general is just like, I mean, sure, you'll have the better third party in a console standpoint. But, you know, if I really want the best third party games, I can just get them on my PC, which I have for this channel. So, I mean, I really don't see that as a point right at this point. You know what I'm saying? I get third party games on PS4 all the time. Why? Most because they have content. You know what I'm saying? They have extra content and this, that, and the third. Plus, I go for Platinums and I, you know, I chill with my friends. So, I do that on PS4. But, you know, if you guys really, you know, want the best multiplayer in a console standpoint, okay, that's a reason to get it, I guess, <laughs> I guess, but let's be real here, um, a lot of people who are hyping up games like Tomb Raider, games that came out four years ago, five years ago, you know what I'm saying, I just find that funny that we're in 2017, and yet there's not a single new game that you guys are talking about to hype up. None of you guys are hyping up Crackdown 3. It's funny how you guys were hyping up Crackdown 3, saying it was the most beautiful thing of all time, and then you look at when it gets delayed by a year, you go, it looks like dog shit. I find that funny. But nonetheless, man, nonetheless. Not, nonetheless, it's not even about that. It's not even about that. I just want to, uh, you know, give a quick history lesson real quick. Because guys really think, you know, the power gap is all that matters. Guys, it's not about power. It's about more than power. You need games, man. Look at the PS2 versus the original Xbox. The original Xbox had the graphics advantage, just like the Xbox One X has over the PS4 Pro. And the PS2 had nothing but exclusives in games. Now, some people might argue going, wait, wait we didn't have exclusives back then. If you think about it, we kind of did. You see, when the Xbox originally came out, right, it had like House of the Dead. It had Jet Set Radio future and halo and a few other games right and they all look good like the warriors look better on the xbox versus the ps2 and they had a lot of better games on the xbox you know what i'm saying like games look good visually and fidelity wise it looks good on xbox like De uh, mortal kombat deadly alliance and whatnot those games look great right because i had an original xbox yes i had an xbox and a 360 but 
they all look good, right? All on the Xbox One, uh, Xbox One, it looked good. But when you look to the PS2, you notice that it was a good amount of games that were missing from the Xbox uh, original, such as Dragon Ball Z Budokai's were missing. Now, you did have Budokai 1 on the original Xbox, but Budokai 2, Budokai 3, Tenkaichi, all those games were not on the Xbox. They were pretty much exclusive to the PlayStation 2. You had all the Grand Theft Autos, for the most part, were exclusive to only the PS2. I think one Grand Theft Auto or maybe two got on the Xbox, but a good chunk of the good ones were, you know, on the um, PS2. You had uh, Bloody Roar, exclusive to the PS2 for the most part. I mean, there were so many games that were just only, like, on PlayStation for the most part. And that right there ended up being the downfall of the Xbox original. The original Xbox was cool and all, but again, it just wasn't, uh, it just, it wasn't future-proof in terms of games, in terms of having every game on the market, you know what I'm saying? Then it would have been a very, very good hit. But nonetheless, it did good. It was a success, nonetheless. It, was, it wasn't a great, great success, but it was a nice little success, right? So after that, we had the original, uh, we had the 360. 360 was good. It came out, again, they had the power, somewhat power advantage. It looked like, uh, it would appear, because, you know, the third-party games look better on the 360, but it wasn't really, it wasn't really more powerful than the PS3. PS3 had more power, you know, power with the cell architecture, but it was terrible to develop for, and they had their first-party games took advantage of the power. Now, if you look at the difference there, right, what do you know is the difference between the Xbox One X and the PS3? The Xbox One X and the PS3 were the most powerful consoles of their, uh, like, of their generation, yes? Now, the Xbox One X might have the power, but it doesn't have the software to show off that power. The PS3 had the software to show off that power and actually entice people to buy the PS3. Now, as years went on, they had to refine it. You know, it, took, it cost them more money to refine the console and fix it up and get things done. And as you clearly saw, they fixed it up. We got, you know, Uncharted 2, 3, all these games for the PS3, and everybody was buying the PS3 and loving it. You know what I'm saying? Xbox uh, 360, you know, they had the multiplats like you guys want right now, right? You have the multiplats now, but again... Even with the multiplats, they lost their way. They went from having games like Island Wake, they had Gears, Halo, and Forza to where, like, they basically just focused on three instead of, like, focus on more. You know what I'm saying? Connectables and everything of that nature was pretty much pushed aside for just Halo, Gears, and Forza. And you look at things now, we still are in that type of trend right now where we just have Halo, Gears, and Forza. Now, some people might argue and say, you know, well, what about the indie games and, like, State of Decay? Let's be real here. Those games are not really anything that's going to blur the lines between, oh, my God, I got to really get this over this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? It's not really going to do that. But for some people, it might. So I'm not going to say – I'm just going to say it's not my particular cup of tea. Just like it's not a lot of people's uh, cup of tea. That's the best way to represent it. That way a lot of people can get where I'm coming from. But – a lot of those games just, you know, like Halo, Gears, and Forza, those just preach to the choir. Those, just like uh, Mario, Zelda, and like Kirby and whatnot preach to the choir for Nintendo fans. Or you look at PlayStation side, you know, you'll look at PlayStation, you know, Uncharted, um, Last of Us, and like God of War. Those preach to the choir on PlayStation side. But again... It's crazy how you look at that and you look and you compare it and it's like, wow, like the differences are so, are so like, it, it makes you scratch your head on the differences. It really does. You look at PS3, it had the exclusives down pat, but it just didn't have the multiplats in terms of looking, you know, that great in their favor. 360, or I'm sorry, uh, Xbox One X, you know, it has the multiplats looking good in their favor, but again, it's missing the other piece of the pie and that's the first party games. And a lot of people might want to argue that. A lot of people not, might not want to understand that and want to, uh, you know, think of excuses for that. It's fine. You can think of excuses for it all you want. But let's be real here. You're only hurting yourself in the long run. You're not hurting me. You're not hurting any other PlayStation dude or an Xbox or, I'm sorry, a Nintendo dude or a PC dude in the long run. No, you're hurting yourself. You know, you look at what's going on with the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch uh, launched with nothing but a good, a good chunk of first-party uh, hitters. A good chunk were ports, but again, they're heavy hitters, and they launched with, um, you know, third-party support as well. They got third-party support coming as well. So with that being said, you know, Nintendo has learned from their mistakes, so why can't Microsoft learn from their mistakes? And why can't we hold Microsoft accountable for things that, that need to 
be uh, said. But this is something that a lot of people are not uh, doing on the internet. They're not holding Microsoft accountable for things that need to be said. And okay, I understand that a lot of you might not like how I go about it at times. You know, like, well, I'll insert a meme, whatever. But listen, listen, look at it like this, man. There's a few articles out there already saying that there's going to be huge, or you'll be able to see the difference, you know, between on uh, AAA games on like the Xbox One X and the PS4 Pro. And I look at it like this, man. Sure, you can see better, you know, textures on the ground, the grass, uh, like, you know, on the actual character's face, this, that, and the third. But at the end of the day, man, it's like, okay, that's cool, but what exactly else am I getting out of that? I mean, you look at the frame rates, the frame rates on these games are still atrocious. Quantum Break is atrocious on the Xbox One X, the frame rate, I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's terrible. Screen tearing is terrible. You look at uh, Shadow of War, terrible frame rates on Shadow of War. You look at the frame rates on uh, Tomb Raider, Terrible on that. I mean, come on, man. You can't tell me that uh, that's enough in terms of just me putting a, a new slab of paint and say that that new slab of paint with the 4K is enough for a console generation to be won. It's not. You need games, man. You need incentive. You need true incentive for somebody to purchase this console. And Microsoft simply does not have that. Now, I know I might get somebody who would disagree, and hey, that's the beauty of the internet. But again, you need games to entice people to buy that. And that's just how it works. And this, uh, you know, in everyday life as it is. Well, not everyday life, but that's how it works in gaming for the most part. So if we look at a few other things, right? Okay. Before I get on out of here. Remember, you remember when they first hyped this console up, they talked about the highest res, the best frame rate, basically saying 4K 60 uncompromised. Or let's let, 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 let's uh, let's say the 4K, let's leave the 60 frames out because a lot of people like to damn show that. But then they, they say 60 frames per second in the other part of the clip, which I could easily show. But... They said, you know, she said the highest rest, the best frame rates, no compromises, right? And it's like, okay, I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing 4K half the time. A good chunk of these games are not 4K. Other games, like uh, indie games or whatnot, are 4K 60. Obviously, they're not demanding. But other games, like such and such, are not 4K. Assassin's Creed Origins, which is hyped up the wazoo, is not 4K. So it's like, again, what am I paying for? Sure, you can say you're paying for the best multiplats. Again, it's understandable. You can pay for the best multiplats in a console standpoint. Sure. But again, what else are you supposed to be buying this console for is beyond me. I just don't see it. I don't see it. Maybe because I'm just, I'm lost. I don't know. I'm at a loss with this one, but it is what it is. Some people might, uh, you know, fill me in on what exactly I, it, it is for me to buy this content for. If somebody say 4K streaming, um, for you can, yes, you can stream in 4K, but unfortunately, a lot of you are failing to realize that you cannot record your voice over that. You can stream in 4K, but you can't record it because of the DVR and the Xbox One, unless they fix that with the Xbox One X. You got me on that one. You know what I'm saying? I don't, you can't, I don't know. I don't know what to say on that one. I really don't know what to say. Uh, for somebody who's going to say this is a bash again, it's not a bash. Common sense. Just evaluating a few things. Just evaluating a few things. But I find it funny how in 2017, we're still talking about power and we're not talking about games. And that's something that is very, very important, especially when a console is launched. You know what I'm saying? All the games that we're looking forward to, like in terms of heavy hitters for the Xbox One X, is basically Sea of Thieves, Crackdown 3, and I guess Super Lucky Tales. So if that's all you have to show for this power, Power and next year, next to Sony, when it has God of War, Spider Man, Days Gone, Detroit, this, that, and the third, uh, you know, Days, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, everything, you know what I'm saying? Death Stranding, everything. All these games to show on X on PlayStation side, especially with them, you know, rumored to come out with Spyro and all this. It, I'm telling you right now, man, if they get a Spyro for a year ahead, you know, because there's rumors that Crash Bandicoot is coming to the Xbox, if they get Spyro for a year ahead of Xbox, that's another just a nail in the coffin, man. I'm telling you right now, you need software. It's fine that you got the hardware down pat. It's fine that you got the power down pat. But you need software to really sell this console. If you don't have software to sell this console, then what exactly are someone like is someone like me going to, uh, you know, really jump out our seat over if we, you know, if we don't see it? And that's just common sense, man. Some people might not like where I have to say about this, but it's understandable. You ain't got to like what I have to say, but you're going to have to basically deal with what I got to say at this point. It's just, there's no excuses in 2017. No excuses. And I find it funny and silly how people really, really think 
just because a game looks better in terms of visual fidelity that that game is the end all be all that game is the best value on the market it's not you know what i'm saying sony even though they don't have the better uh you know multiplats now all right they still have like some of the best multiplats period because they have more content with the game and this and the third so i don't know what to tell you it's it's really hit and miss with this it's very very hit and miss but again some people might not uh like what i have to say on that and it's understandable you don't mind you don't have to like what i have to say you really don't but it's just <laughs> I'm just, I'm just being real with you, man. I'm being a realist here. I'm being a realist. I'm looking at the market. I'm looking at everything, and I see everything that's coming, and it's like, dog, everything that's coming out for Microsoft's in and on the PlayStation side and on, you know, and everything of that nature, it's like, listen, everything that's coming out, it's like, dog, who cares for the most part? None of this stuff is, like, making me jump out of my seat. None of this is making me jump out of my seat. All of you do is come out with these ridiculous terms, like super graphics on PS4 Pro. I'm sitting there laughing like, dude, Spider-Man still looks ridiculously better than anything that's on Xbox right now. But you guys want to say super graphics. I just find that funny. I find it funny. I really do find it funny. And to even uh, put that point even into more perspective, look at Super Mario Odyssey. Super Mario Odyssey runs at 60 frames per second. It's not 1080p, if I'm not mistaken, but or or 4K, but the game runs at 60 frames per second. I would take frame rate over resolution any day. That game runs and looks beautiful. At the current resolution and the way it's running, it looks great. I would take 60 frames per second over anything else at this point instead of just this whole uh, 4K nonsense. I really would. But, again, people don't want to talk about that. Nah, I just want to talk about resolution, resolution, resolution. And it's like, dog, half of you dudes who are talking about resolution don't even own 4K displays. Half of you don't even own it. But, again, it is what it is. I'm just telling you how it is, man. You might not like it, but it is what it is, man. That's it, though. That's it. It's not a diss. This is a common sense evaluation type of thing. And uh, hopefully uh, you get where I'm coming from. If not, well, that's what the comment session is for. Type away. Tell me what you guys didn't get in this video. All right? Other than that, I will see you guys in my next video uh, probably tomorrow. And uh, that's it, man. Shout out to all the new subscribers again. You guys be good. Stay easy. Deuces.